What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and this review is coming to you caffeinated and collected into the confines of far too many words for far too little time considered. As always, it'll be more than two minutes long and won't be filled with sponsored bullcrap. So settle in, adjust your spaceship seat to a laid-back position, and prepare to blast off to the alien worlds of the VR game Primordium. And you're probably thinking what I'm thinking. When I first heard about it, I thought this is obviously a game about a transformer and an accordion. And then the main characters just travel in the world playing old Buckwheat Zedico honky-tonk songs for everybody they meet. Turns out, it's not what that is. Instead, here in Primordian, you're thrown into the massive shoes of Gregor in his quest to, well, stab everything in his path that belongs to the enemy. The game's currently on Steam on Early Access for $24.99. It's available on the Vive and the Rift. But you know what? They're asking for money, so let's see how it turned out. As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Primordian. Sprinkler Swords, unfortunate hand placement, and virtually warning enemies that attacking you isn't a good idea. Graphics are up first. And we'll start with a little caveat. OBS wasn't really loving this title and had some issues with V-Sync when it comes to the recording, but not actually in the game. So if you see something here, that did not actually occur for me. It was just in the recording. I have to say this though, it's really rare that a game has me sit back and say, wow. And it seems like every other VR game, there's some damn little issue that always drags away that moment of success, kicking and screaming into Failureville. But for much of Primordian, it is easily one of the better looking, maybe even in some ways, the best looking game on VR at this time, at least when it comes to the artistry itself. The first thing I have to mention is also the color work, the mixing and understanding of how deep reds and almost noxious looking greens will be contrasted over the top of the natural browns and the gray of the alien stonework or the landscape itself is just absolutely spot on here. Now we've seen this done in many games, especially yellows and greens. And when done incorrectly, in this case, many times, let's say an ambient fog layer reflecting and augmenting the light within areas, it can look almost old and certainly a bit unattractive to the eye. But one thing you notice in Primordian is a judicious attempt at making sure that it's there, but not over the top. And this is something that especially you will notice with the level design itself and just the way everything works together. And speaking of level design, while only occasionally straying from the follow this trail because it's right kind of gameplay, They've handled the pacing incredibly well, and there's these interludes where ambient wildlife is terrassing through the trees, or you end up taking your first footsteps into a cave with a massive skull above its entrance. And that atmosphere and that moodiness is so prevalent. Also, you may end up finding some ancient device that looks like the designer of Tron friggin' set himself on fire and leapt inside. And that mix of the natural and unnatural and the technological and the primitive coming together is done really well. Also, up to that level, at least design-wise, are the enemies. They are really interesting, and sure, they do somewhat follow the Predator stylings, even stealing the dreads, though this is the first time I saw laser dreads, and I was like, what? And then as I began to fight them and see more of them, I'm like, those are actually pretty cool. And one of the ways in which you notice this is their animation, which is very well done, both ranged and up close, and various bits can be chopped off of the enemies, and you can still see them fighting for a chance to bite a hole in you, regardless of that. But I have to say, graphically, the weapons take the cake. The default swords are shark swords that can be pounded into the ground to up your energy. Looks like someone in Fallout said, you know what? Let's see what happens when you mix a great white with a car bumper. Or the phenomenal design of the detailed acid gun, which in Primordian is the equivalent of yanking some poor creature out of the earth, still in its home in a comfy wooden log, and then questionably touching it. So it jets out bubbly acid onto enemies and you can watch them dissolve in real time obviously one part confused by the slow losing of their skin and the other part just fascinated by their quick weight loss and as you play primordi and one of the things that i think comes up for a lot of us is that you really have to recognize some of the original unreal the original game and its design elements and they've sort of gone into the guns here as well whether it be on purpose or subconsciously it never looks like copying it doesn't even look really like cribbing. There's just various little elements that you can see, and I really dug that. Now, sadly, one place the game does hurt itself is lack of collision detection on the enemies themselves, and you do get that moment when two of them seem to become one, sharing the same head and torso, but suddenly having four arms and three legs, or an impressive future in Alien Pornhub videos, one of the two. I wish that was cleared up because design-wise, they're done really well. Their textures are good. Their faces look really cool. But when you start to see those kind of errors, it really does pull the entire presentation down a bit. And of course, one half of presentation's performance, even on the older 5820K at 4.5 with the 1080 or the 1080 Ti on the newer i7, I was actually getting a little bit of reprojection at times at about 1.8, 1.9 sampling on the Steam settings while getting none on both systems 
at the default. So there's going to be a spot there for some adjustments. There's a couple graphical adjustments you can do, but it is best to remember this is an early access game. So of course, performance will most likely get better and better as we go forward. And when it comes down to it as a package, it's got phenomenal color work. Weapon and enemy design is really cool with a number of smaller issues bringing it down. Sound, music, and voice. So let's do music first. I was not a big fan. First, the battle music wasn't bad with enough thundering drums rampaging in the background. You half expect to turn around and see that you were magically teleported to your local music shop on drum day. And it is perfectly fine. I like that theme, but its cues are off. And at times that means it'll ramp up or down depending on enemies nearby or something that you can't see. Or you'll get that moment where you're fighting an enemy who's still on screen, just battling it out. And the musicians were all like, yeah, he's got this and walked off. Unfortunately, when it comes to the more exploratory bits, I also was not that interested in what I heard. It's a little bit like somebody ended up doing all the fentanyl, sat down to play the Dracula score and only got through the first section and then just nodded off. Now I've made O Gun Fruity Loops jokes in the past and here we do see some of that come to fruition, that one long drawn out key that really is unfortunate. There just needs to be more variety and while things like chanting and vocal synths were used, it never really felt like it was doing anything other than taking up space and never really added to the atmosphere. And of course that brings us to sound and a lot of the sounds are really good. You do get a nice wide sound stage and there's some work done here, especially in the slow motion parts that help to keep the audio tuned towards that engagement rather than the coveted let's slow everything down and remove 90% of the sound sources like nothing else is happening. Instead here, it's like the entire world slowed down, which I actually liked better. The clang of a weapon off armor is totally changed and that works really well. If I had any quibbles, it's that the generic guns you end up getting just never really sounded as cool as they looked. And while they don't fall into generic sci-fi royalty free sound sampling levels, I sure do wish there was some more tonal kick to those. Now, environmentally, the game does what it can to add an alien feeling to everything. And while most of the animals that you do here obviously samples from the ones here from Planet Holy Terra, there are some little bits that I like from various birds and bugs. It does help to keep that desolate jungle theme working. Overall, I'd say it's average. There's some weapon effects that I'd like to see improved and some possibly more samples for the soundscapes to really give that feeling or impression of being in an alien environment. But overall, pretty average. And of course that brings us to voice and there's only a couple, most of them are just run through some heavy synths. It does okay, it tells a little bit of a story. I would say because it is so heavy on the modulation, it's hard to get any emotion from it or anything like that. It sounds suitably alien enough, which I guess sort of helps, but I would say that's average as well. Gameplay and a bit about the story. So as I said before, you play as Gregor, an alien that lives in the perpetual darkness of a rotation locked planet in near the center of the universe somewhere. Every couple thousand years, there's a solitary moon that rotates the planet and passes over the light side, allowing for folks from the dark side to basically visit one another, trade goods, and learn each other's customs. And as we all know, the best way to do that is to take an assortment of weapons like swords, guns, crossbows, and living things and plunder hello, an entire race that look like they're followers of a predator's Facebook page. Now, story aside, because that's pretty much it, this is the typical point-to-point -point gameplay versus wave shooters. Unfortunately, the combat's all over the place. First, the weapons. Now, each weapon's unique and it has a number of design elements that really do work to solidify the fiction that I think the story doesn't. But the weapons never actually work as well as they look. And in fact, the first time you grab the sword, it can sometimes feel a little bit like it got slammed in a car door. It's like the angle's just a little bit off on everything, and this is noticeable on the Rift and on the Vive. Now, when it comes to Windows Mixed Reality headsets, this doesn't officially support them, and what I'm going to say right now will not affect the score, but they're really off on those. So if you are one of those type of people who just jumps in and buys a game, it just assuming it'll probably work on those media devices, you should maybe hold back. And when it comes down to it, ranged weapons work actually really well with good far off collision detection and some interesting arsenals. But when you get up close, it just sort of falls apart. When it comes down to it, the creature's movements coupled with some fairly poor overall AI can actually result in this odd dance where this cool looking alien shows up and he takes one step forward and then two steps back. And then it's like, you know what? I'm going to take a step forward and eh, maybe two steps back and again and again and again. Now, sometimes they do leap towards you, but their effective range is far shorter than even they seem to know. And the number of times that a Leviathan of an alien is going to leap towards you and swing into the air at least five feet from you can really hurt the game. 
One thing that does alleviate this a little bit is just wading in and taking on two or three enemies at the same time because they have no problem attacking the same time either to you. You can block with both swords, that kind of stuff. You can have a gun in one hand and a sword in the other. That stuff can be pretty epic. Now, the world itself is cut up in a unique way with various modes like Arcade, which allows for you to just wade in the campaign and you really aren't looking at a game that's going to be longer than, let's say, 1.5 to 2 hours. And of course, that brings us to Immersion because this is a VR game. The Immersion level in this game is actually incredibly high artistically a lot of the art and ideas went into the guns went into the enemies went into the things that matter but when you look at the side and you look at the environments and you're sort of walking around them there are some cool bits there some stuff i don't want to ruin for you but some giant creatures various different little elements they did a really good job and overall i would say it felt like you were really there. There was some issues with height for one or two people that played this with me, but overall, I think they pretty much nailed it. And that brings us to fun factor. You know, there's a lot of moments where this game is very fun. First, the exploration for me, walking down the landscape and seeing massive creatures flying over you and the almost sing-song voices of some of them coming and filtering up through the trees. Very well done. Some really good level design, some verticality, which I liked. There was also some elements in the caves that really surprised me and it changed it up a bit. Combat with some of the weapons can actually be phenomenal too. And I can't tell you how much fun that acid gun is. It is simply a trip to melt enemies and see how it works in the game. But regardless of everything else, up close combat needs some work. Again, this is early access, so we have to expect some of this stuff. Now, as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale, with rent being replaced by deep, deep sale on PC. It's early access, and I get that, but it's also 25 bucks. And with some of these issues that I've mentioned, I cannot recommend it at that. So I think waiting for a sale would be a much better choice at this moment. The devs are consistently in the forums. The devs have been patching this since day one and adding little quality of life improvements. So there's a lot of responsiveness there. And I think that we're going to see a much better game in a little bit of time. Price versus what you get right now. It's a little bit questionable. So anyway, that's it for me. I hope you liked the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Give it a thumbs down if you didn't. If you get a chance, check out Reddit or Twitter. Also, I have a Patreon so you can become a patron and even at the cost of one buck, get in on various different games and contests and podcasts that we do, as well as just continue to help the channel do reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.